Hey all, I thought I'd make a video today on Git because I get a lot of questions from students about what Git is and how they can use it for their projects and how exactly, you know, um, the whole thing works. Uh, so this video, I'll just kind of intro Git and then in subsequent videos, I'll probably go through more of the specifics about Git and also using GitHub. I'm sure you've heard of this, github.com and we'll come back to what github.com is. But basically, Git is a tool on your computer that allows your computer to remember the different stages of your web development. So if you're making a website and you know, you're putting together some HTML and you know, some pretty styles in your CSS you know, and also doing some JavaScript work, um, wouldn't it be nice to, along the way, keep track of all the work you did and then for whatever reason like if you messed up go back to a previous point not go back to scratch but to a previous point and then just kind of like you know delete that extra work and just stay on you know the current work that you're doing um the git allows you to kind of do that to kind of go between back and forth different states of your website and for whatever reason let's say you wanted to make a completely different website feature, you know, you could go off of the current track you're on, work there, build some extra feature, and if for whatever reason you didn't work, you could still go back to the original track you were on and continue building, or, you know, like you could add that extra feature into your track. Um, so Git is kind of like that. If you notice here, there's a little logo here. And it shows you here's a little circle and then another circle and then a circle. You could think of these as kind of like points in time with your website development. And you can kind of like move in between these different points of time using the Git uh, tool. The thing about Git is it's very command line driven. You can use the GitHub software, um, which allows you to kind of visually see what you're doing. But um, most developers I know. Um, and most serious developers anyway, tend to use the command line to kind of navigate through a lot of the Git work. So if you're not familiar with the command line, I highly recommend uh, checking out my videos on the command line. Um, you do not need command line, that said, to use Git. However, it is very helpful. Um, so I'm going to put this to the side for a second. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you install Git if you don't have Git on your computer. Um, so the easiest way to check if you have Git on your computer is to type in git dash dash version here. And that will tell you in your command line, oh yes, you do have Git. Um, it's version 2.64 for me. It may be different for you. Um, Max by default get Git, at least for um, Mavericks 10.9 and above. I am using um, El Capitan. And I think um, you can check this by just doing about this map right here. Yeah, OSX El Capitan 10.11. So by default, I get Git. And um, that said, if you don't have Git, you'll want to go ahead and follow these instructions here. You'll want to use download the explant code command line tools for Mac or for Windows. You'll want to install it on Windows um, following these instructions here. It's very simple for Windows too, actually. Um, if you're a Linux guy, you probably know what you're doing. You probably just want to just follow these instructions and get Git. Um, so now I'm going to go over to my desktop here from my terminal. Again, if this is not familiar to you, check out my videos on command line. Um, I am seeding over to my desktop from my squiggly line folder, which is basically my users folder um, and the default folder in the terminal. And you'll notice here I have this thing here that says website. So I'm going to go ahead and just cd into the website. And then I'll use my special alias command open. And that will open this project folder for me. Um, if you're not familiar with alias commands, check out the command line videos that I've shown before. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over first off to Sublime. And that will open this project folder for me. You can see I have some boilerplate code. So let's go ahead and right click and open this in a browser. And you can see I've got the default hello world uh, red by uh, default. And um, 
coming back here, I'm going to go over to my terminal again, and I'm just going to say git status. And you'll notice that I get an error, and it says fatal, not a git repository. And that's true, because <clears throat> git tracks your files and folders, but if you don't tell git to actually track your folder, you won't get a git repository. So that's very important. If you want git, now that you've installed it, to track a specific folder on your computer, you need to cd over to that folder first, like I've done here. Then you need to do git space init, like this. That will go ahead and initialize this folder with git. So now if I type ls dash la, and remember this is for <clears throat> uh, searching hidden files. If you notice here, I've got a little dot in front of my git folder that just got created. It says initialize empty git repository. You'll see that now we have an extra git uh, folder on top of our index and script and style CSS. So the next step I want to do is I want to do git status. That's the original command I had from above. And you'll notice that I'm on branch master, followed by this message initial commit, followed by untracked files. Use git add file to include what will be committed, index.html, script, js, style.css. And you'll notice it says nothing added to commit, but untracked files present. Use git add to track. So all this basically just means that, hey, git is now um, checking out like our entire folder here. And it notices that, hey, you have these files here, index.html, script, and style. But <clears throat> they're not being tracked by git just yet. Remember, it's still a process. The only thing we've done so far is init git in our repository. So that means the tools are there, but we still have to make git actually track the files. And we do that by telling git which files to track. If I say git add index.html, and I say git status, you'll notice that this file here turns green now and says git changes to be committed. <clears throat> and it says that index the HTML is a file ready for commitment. Commitment is basically the way you save. So first, I initialize my Git repository, give my, com my project folder the tools it needs so Git can track it. Then I have to tell Git which files to track. And then finally, I need to make a commit so that Git not only tracks the files, but it saves the work, saves the progress. So I have to say Git commit dash m index um, actually I have to put a um, message here so this that's what this dash m means message and I'll just say first commit okay so you'll notice now I have create mode index.html one file change 11 insertions so my first commit went through now if I say git dash git space log like this you'll see I have one uh, commit here followed by what we call a hash and you can think of a hash as basically like an ID number if we replace this with just the number one commit one then commit two then commit three and commit four um, the computer would basically remember okay well this is commit one this is commit two commit three and so these are points in time like again if you go back to this little logo here as the example this could be ID one ID two ID three however uh, Git doesn't use ID1, ID2, ID3. It uses hashes because hashes are easier for the Git algorithm to look up and less confusing to Git. Um, so the long and short of it essentially is these little hashes here basically represent your little points on your Git branch, if you think of it um, that way, uh, for what files and folders how are being tracked and saved. So now let's go ahead and come back to this thing here. I'm going to do some more stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just to git status and it'll say hey look you didn't track these files here. So I want to go ahead and track them too. So I'll do git space add and then space dash dash all. If you type dash all like this you'll get an error. So you'll want to make sure you put two dashes here. So that 
dash dash all is a flag and that basically means track all files. So now if I get status here, you'll see that these files are now being tracked too. We'll go ahead and commit them. Remember, if I don't commit, these files will not be saved. So, um, as part of my work. So I'll save them and I'll just say git commit dash m and added script js and style dot css. And you notice I can put any message I want here except for a blank string because uh, git will complain. Um, you have to put in the, a useful message because this is how you and your other developers, let's say you work with another friend, um, understand, okay, what are the different changes in your Git project folder? So it's like, you know, essentially, like it's, like a, I may have said this or not, but it's like going to Word and saving your, you know, Word document. However, um, you know, with each save, you basically save, you know, what it is about the save in a single sentence that makes it different from the last save. So that later, when you type in git log, you can see, okay, I've got, you know, this first commit, and then I have the second commit, and it explains to the user, hey, look, you know, this is the difference between first commit and second commit. Um, by the way, like, usually first commit, you can always say first commit. However, like, with each successive commit, it's good standard practice to always have a useful message. If you don't have a useful message, um, it may be kind of dumb or, like, you know, confusing to the next person who has to work with it. Um, and that's really important for work, too. Okay, so let's go in here and let's make some changes now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make the color, um, you know, green for whatever reason. And I'm going to save this here. And notice I'm saving it here, but it's not being tracked here. We have to do that manually with Git. As you get better with this, there are tools out there that can do kind of some of this work for you. But um, like I said, most developers like to do their work within the terminal. And as you do this with time, um, it'll become second nature. But that said, I'm going to come back to my index.html page, refresh. You notice that this is green. If I go over here and I say git status, you'll see that I've modified the style.css. OK, so I'm going to add the style.css again. And this time it says git add file because it says here I've modified it, so we want to add the changes. Otherwise, it'll say no changes added to commit. Um, so we're going to add the style.css, and then we're going to say git space status again. And I'll say, okay, this is ready to be committed. So now I can save my work. I can say um, changed uh, paragraph tags to green color in style.css. Okay, so now that commit was saved. If I do git log, you'll see now I have three different commits. So if I come back over here now, you'll see this screen. But for whatever reason, let's just say I didn't like that change, or my boss didn't like that change. Now they want you know everything back to being red. Well, I could go in here and I could manually type red, which is fine. You know, like however, if I have like hundreds of lines of changes and my boss for whatever reason just doesn't like those new changes, rather than going in and manually changing all them back to the way it was before, I can use Git to revert back to that state. And then for whatever reason, let's say if you know I'm working with two bosses and the other boss somehow convinces the other boss, boss one, um, that the changes I made, you know, altogether the green was actually cool. I don't have to go, oh, you know, like I changed all this manually here. Now I got to change it all back. I can just use Git to go back to that future state. So it's really useful in that way for like kind of maneuvering past, back and forth through different you know, tracks, if you will, back and forth, back and forth. If your boss doesn't like it, you go back. If your boss decides, hey, you know what, I do like it, you can go over here. So, as you can imagine, I probably have a very fickle boss. That's why I love Git. <laughs> so in order for me to go back in time, I can just do Git checkout, and I can just do the name, or the remember these IDs, these hashes here? Just go ahead and just copy this. And you'll want to do git log first to get the hash number. And then you'll just put in the hash number here. And it'll say, okay, 
Git is now at head 1.1868C53. Okay, so now if you notice over here, it's color red. So cool, like that was very useful. If I wanted to go back to the, orig the original state, I could just come back up to my git log, and then these are all sorted by the um, uh, descending order. So the first, uh, the last one comes first, and then the first one, com the first commits at the bottom. So if I want to go to my first commit, I could just check out. And now you'll notice that the index is the only thing remaining. The style.css is gone. Um, you know, like I said, you know, if my boss for whatever reason decides, hey, don't delete the entire style and the CSS and the script stuff, I can always go ahead and git log. And I can git checkout. And let's see here. I'm going to go back to this one. And um, so you always want to remember like the different hashes. If you don't, uh, make sure you save them. Or so at least git log will tell you. I think. Git log. Okay, so there we go. So um, if you get the hash number, then it'll uh, go back to that previous state or that future state. So you'll see I have all the stuff here again. Okay, so that is kind of like a qu quick um, tutorial on git log. I could get more complicated with this, but Essentially, this is the basics of Git. Remember, you have to initialize your folder with git init. Then you have to, um, after you do that, you have to check the status of your Git. And it'll tell you what files are being tracked and not tracked. If you want to track files, you have to use git add followed by the file name that you wish to track. So here I'm just putting a bracket, angular bracket here. But that basically means nothing. I don't have that file. Actually, I have to type the file name. Then also, you know, later, let's say I like my changes. I want to use git commit to save the changes, and I have to have a special message. It's a special message. And then finally, let's say after I commit, let's say it was no good. I want to go back in time. I need to use git log to see which commits I'm at, and then get git checkout, and then followed by the ID to go to a certain state and jump between different states. So I hope you like that. There are more complicated things you could do with Git, especially resetting and also using GitHub, but I won't explain that for now. Um, I'm just going to explain this in this video and then we'll go on to other uses in future videos. Thanks for watching.